the field is growing in the 2024 presidential race with former Vice President Mike Pence and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum entering the race. The total number of Republican candidates now stands at 12. This comes as two Democrats are challenging President Biden for the White House in the Democratic primary. That's RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson. And just this week, a third-party candidate jumped into the race, Dr. Cornell West, who launched his bid as a member of the People's Party. And Dr. West joins us now. So, Dr. West, uh, let me start with the obvious question. Uh, how are, are you running to win? Or are you running to get your issues of importance that you think Joe Biden is not paying enough attention to to the forefront? Well, I mean, one, my dear brother, that you always have a calling to win. You want to bear witness at the highest level of quality, integrity, and honesty that you can. So, yes, I'm trying to push toward the finish line. Why? Because I want to reintroduce America to the best of itself. And it's fairly clear that Brother Trump, neo-fascist gangster, not the best. Brother Biden, neoliberal hypocrite, not the best. I want the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., Dorothy Day, Abraham Joshua Heschel, and Edward Zaid, and Chief Joseph, and Grace Lee Boggs, and Luis, Luis Marino. These are those fighting for poor and working people, both parties stand in the way of the empowerment of poor and working peoples, both parties tied, Wall Street, militarism, Pentagon, tied to Silicon Valley. What about the 60% of precious Americans of all colors who are struggling every day and month to put food on the table and are hardly doing it, while the 1% is simply uh, tied to their uh, quest mm -hmm. for the luxurious life? American democracy, not just is at stake, the whole planet, Brother Jake, you know that man with fossil fuels. And, and look, look at the debt ceiling agreement. We can make a deal with Brother Manchin in terms of his pipeline that will do in not just working class people's spaces, but ecological collapse, given what's going on on the East Coast. But we can't make a deal with him in terms of voting rights with regard to the filibuster. That's Brother Biden. We need something better. Where's the best of the country? Yeah. Not just the working people here, but around the world. Because the militarism abroad is something that I'm deeply concerned about, be it in Latin America, be it in Africa, be it in the Middle East. So I hear you, but these elections often do mm -hmm. come down to a binary choice between the Democrat and the Republican. Um, Dr. Lawrence Tribe, a Harvard University professor, as you, you were, tweeted, WTF, you know what that stands for. Does Cornell West really Ooh. want to help the GOP nominee win the way Ralph Nader helped George W. Bush defeat Al Gore in 2000? Please stop this foolishness before you really hurt the things you care to help, unquote. His fear, obviously, that you would sap away enough votes of progressives who otherwise would vote for Joe Biden and thus deliver the White House to the Republican, making things worse than they would be under Biden, in Lawrence Tribe's view. Your response? Well, one, I mean, Brother Tribe, he's looking at the world again through these Manichaean views. You get either this or that, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, Frick or Frack. Neo-fascist catastrophe, neoliberal disaster, are disasters better than catastrophes? Absolutely. But are disasters disasters? Absolutely still. So the, the idea that Brother Trump would reduce, I mean, my Brother Tribe would reduce what I'm trying to do and focus on the this unbelievable suffering and social misery of poor and working people around the world to some ego vanity. I said, good God almighty, what are you doing? Do you actually think that the rich legacy of the figures that I talked about can be reduced to their ego vanity when they moved in the electrical political context? Part of the problem is, is people who believe it's either the Democrats or the Republicans have left out serious discussion of mass incarceration, left out of what's been going on around the world, 800 military bases around the world. From the vantage point of the West Bank, our precious Palestinian brothers and sisters, what does it look like in terms of the bombs dropped by the U.S. government by either party? Same is true with working people in other parts of the world. This is a moral and a spiritual issue. It's not simply narrow strategic thinking of neoliberals who view the world in terms of either Republicans or Democrats. Brother Jake, we will never defeat fascism, which is on the march by milquetoast neoliberalism. Neoliberalism will only be a caretaking postponement of the fascism. You got to get at the source of it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going straight into Trump country, my brother. I'm talking to some of my white brothers and sisters who are following the neo-fascist Pied Piper. I'm concerned about your suffering. Look another way, 
the words of Martin King, let us embrace one another by accenting our best. That includes acknowledging those who right now are on the other side. We want realignment. We want what my dear brother Clifton West calls a paradigm shift in American politics. That's in part what this is about, my brother. Let me ask you just a, a practical question. Where do the People's Party, where, where will you be on the ballot? Will you be on the ballot in Michigan? Will you be on the ballot in Wisconsin? Uh, I don't think the People's Party was on the ballot in all 50 states last time. Are you, are you hoping to get on the ballot in every state or, or even just the, the battleground states? We're trying to get on the ballot in every state, which means we've got to get the requisite signatures in each state. We are in process of ensuring to make sure we get on that ballot. As you know, People's Parties broke away from Brother Bernie's uh, uh, attempt in 2016. So we're very new at this in that regard. But most importantly, we just want to make sure that our fellow citizens get a chance to see what the best of America is about, the best of America and the best of any nation is about fighting for poor and working people, no matter what color, gender, sexual orientation, and not just confining it to the states. I'm talking about solidarity with Iranians dealing with fascist Iranian, uh, Iranian elites. I'm talking about solidarity with workers in Brazil. I'm talking about solidarity with workers in Guatemala. This is a international project, my brother. That's what Martin Luther King was concerned when he said the bombs dropped in Vietnam fall in ghettos and hoods and barrios and poor white sections. We have got a professional managerial class that has turned its back too often for the plight of the most vulnerable. That's my tradition. That's what, I, this, that's what this campaign is all about, my brother. So, Dr. West, I have a ton more questions, but we're out of time. You can see we're on the clock. Uh, come back. I'm going to just cut and paste, and we're going to ask these questions about your policies and your platforms. Next time you're here, open invitation. We love, we love having you on. No, indeed. Salute you, brother. You stay strong. God bless your loved ones, man. You too as well, Dr. West. Thank you so much for joining us. Because uh, you, you made me think about something, because he did state that he's against the 1%. He wants to be able to challenge the 1% and dismantle the 1%. But looking at his policies, because these are six, I guess the six of his policies that he's using. And so since I just talked about what he said about, you know, challenging the 1% or being against the 1%, this right here in the red in the bottom left-hand corner in the red, said, end the wars, bring our troops home and invest those trillions of war dollars into American communities. Now, <laughs> you, you're not gonna win i'm just saying that right there like come on now because yeah. if you if you become president you are serving the one percent let's just be real he is the one percent i was just gonna about? say that he is the one percent <laughs> is he going like like let the charity start at home <laughs> cover north philly and start you know just passing out bags of money or buying up some buildings in our communities and neighborhoods, and you start be the change you wish you were. What, what, what did Gandhi say? Be the change you wish the world to be, or some shit like that. He, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, dude, like this is this is out of pocket, man. Like to to take this seriously is disrespectful. At this point, um, he probably one of his students probably put this damn uh <laughs> this list. This list together of, of things he's gonna do in regards to like his policy. This looks like a high school project. Um, but nah, man, come on, man. I mean, you know what? I needed a day for shits and giggles, and this was right on time. Um, I mean, I <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Pat. Well, the the thing is, all six of them things are not things within the scope of the president's power. So let's start there. Um, only Congress can start and end wars. That takes an act of Congress. Um, only Congress can expand civil liberties. We see what happened when presidents try to use executive orders to do that. The next president can come in and undo it. Only Congress can do that. Protect the environment. Congress. Medicare for all. Congress. Revitalize the economy. Shit, that ain't even Congress. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> That's from 1913. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Create true democracy. 
Well, now you're talking about creating a whole new industry. Like, so my thing is, if we being real about it, I I don't. That's where I'm at. Um, because and even with that, even if I wanted to give him, again, we go back to black folk mimicking or trying to continue something that white folks have built. The same as we do with the Divine Nine and blah, blah, blah. This is a movement that was primarily pushed into prominence by Bernie Sanders. You ain't even had a respect for the people you trying to, 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 to represent to create your own shit independent. You, you're building something that was started by a one percenter. As a one percenter, Continuing to pretend to fight the one percent. What happened when Bernie Sanders made his millions of dollars selling that book? They asked him about it in the interview, and he said, "Well, if people have a problem with my money, then they should write a book." Well, that's a ve- that's a very progressive statement, isn't it? From the most progressive and liberal white man we've ever seen since Dr. Martin Luther King decided to take black people on the exercise campaign. Hey. Feel the burn. Hey, you gotta feel the burn. But feel but see, th- <laughs> but that's why that's why I am because I want the reason why I want to break this down because I want us to make sure we're taking a realistic look at a black candidate or all candidates there is because you know when the elections come around, of course you know we're breaking that stuff down. But we need to we need to make sure that we are properly vetting all candidates. But just because a candidate looks like us, I want to make sure. Because I now he's not running as a Democrat, so I really don't think black people are going to really rally behind him like that. But it's just the fact that someone like him or just for in the future when, when black people run, because we've already seen what we got with Obama, we see. We ain't heard from Kamala. Black people were so excited about having Kamala. We ain't heard from Kamala. Right. <laughs> And so we ju- we need to take politics more serious. You know, we used to talk about this all the time on the Freedom Train. We need to take politics more serious. We need to do more studying. We need to make sure we're looking at people's platforms, asking the right questions. Make sh- make sure we're not just going in the booths and just checking off people's names because we like that person or they talk fancy. Because listening to the rhetoric that uh, Cornell West is 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 giving us, and then looking at his policies, it just doesn't seem realistic. I mean, I understand the political dance and and the the parade that people have to put on, but we live in the real world. We exist in the real world, and this doesn't seem realistic. And it doesn't. I I, I don't see how this. I I, I want to know what strategy he will use to actually make this happen if he actually wins. Like, cause listening to what Pat is saying, you know, Congress, but so Cornell, what actual strategy will you be using to make sure that you can create true democracy? And what does that actually mean? Man, he won't even make it to the inauguration. Cause he's <laughs> saying clean out government corruption and create a true democracy, get money out of politics and ban corporate lobbying. Matter, you can't get money out of politics. You're going to need money to run your campaign. How are you going to get money out of politics? Well, let's talk about the democracy part for one. Nowhere in the Constitution is the word democracy used. It's a republic. Yeah, we're in, we're in a republic, and and so the democracy, the, the word for democracy, is is one of those uh, catchphrases in order to encapsulate the fan, the, the the fandom, the the people. That's what I'm saying. You know, you're trying to talk, but there's no democracy here. Democracy is 51 percent of the people decide we're going to do something, and that's what we do. No, we have representation, which is a republic. Um, that's one. And you're not going to change that because there's too much big money behind all the different things that's going on. And the big money is supporting both both political parties. You got the left wing and the right wing, but they're the same bird. You know what I'm saying? And and as you come in as a third party, like I said before, this wasn't even well thought out. This was something that it perks, it pulls at the heartstring of maybe college students. Who don't know well enough what politics is who has truly never taken because all you got to do is take a civics class and you know what all this means i have been a college i was a college professor for 11 years and um two history degrees one of the things i know for sure 
is that when you learn history, you can smell this bullshit coming a mile away. And when you see all these particular policies, this looks like something that, uh, uh, you know, um, some. this looks like something where these these um, philanthropists um, push a movement like uh, tobacco's bad. So they'll have a commercial with, you know, people just lying in the street with, with cigarette butts all over the place. This looks like something like that. This looks like something that the you know, like an outcast group of children um, or high school students or college students decide that they want to take a stand against, you know, pollution and all this other stuff. And they create gibberish like this. This is not how anybody who's presidential should even be talking. Donald Trump wasn't even this ridiculous when he was running, you know, uh, back in what, 2016? He wasn't mm -hmm. even this ridiculous when he was talking about um, policies and uh, and his platform and what he would run on. Now, he did, you know, tell Jeb Bush, you know, asked him if he measured up. <laughs> but, you know, but he wasn't even this ridiculous about this. Like, he shouldn't even... Uh, like, did anybody proofread this? Like, like fact just check this to before you put it out there? What, what, I, I, but, he, go ahead. Go ahead, Pat. I was going to say, I think he's counting on the same ignorance, but he's pushing the boundaries of it too far. And this is where I say black folk got to understand that the liberals are just as out of touch as, the cons as they claim the conservatives are. Um, mm -hmm. To me, as a thinking black person, it's stupid for black people to even want to be in the true democracy. Mm -hmm. We're 14% we're, we're, we're of the population at best. Why would you want to be in a situation where 51% of the people determine everything? Now, all of a sudden, not only do you have to deal with whites, which you already got to deal with, but you got to deal with everybody else. That got right, more. Right, now it right. becomes a pure numbers game. Anybody yep. that's got more than 40 million people in their representative block is able to overpower you. More Why the fuck yep. would you sign up to live in that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we talked about population, you know, the with the white population and the Hispanic population both being higher than the black population, that would put us in a in a bind. But remember, he said uh like his campaign and everything that's going on is a moral and spiritual issue. So going back to what I'm saying earlier of, I, I'm not saying he was successful at it, but he's trying to pull on them heartstrings. He's trying to find that connection with the people, that emotional connection with the people. Why else would he say this? This ain't no moral political issue. This is purely a political issue. Man, this is all man, politics. It's politics Joe, and economics. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why he said that. You know how uh, every rapper got their favorite bar. Lil right. Wayne love talking about shitting. Got Ooh. 10 bathrooms. I can shit all day. He loved talking about taking a dump in the toilet. Every single, almost every verse I'd have never heard, Lil Wayne is going to talk about taking a dump in the toilet. Every rapper got that bar, that one thing he liked. Cornell West is morality. That's his bar. That's his thing. Every time he opened his mouth to say something or do something, he has to say something about morality. That's why he said it. It's his style. It's his signature flavor. If anybody yeah. is pretending to be more uh, uh, Cornell West, who, again, is a very brilliant man. I'm not taking nothing away from his intelligence. But when I tell you that, uh, to me, this is a joke, it's not because he's stupid. It's because I think he thinks we're stupid. Mm-hmm. And that's where the joke is. Right. Right. Man, I'm with you. Career. He's trying to be like a television host or something, or well, he's trying to catch a, a YouTube stream or something. Well, <laughs> well, let's 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 really look at the state of the world from a military standpoint. And he's talking about the eight hundred mili the eight hundred US military bases around the world. And wanted to bring troops back and spend money elsewhere. Um, you're gonna mess up a lot trying to do that. It's like you're gonna, it's a lot more corruption gonna happen around, the, especially if you're talking about being the global peace person that he is. Like you trying to pull those away, 
you're going to destabilize a lot of places. Those sometimes some of these places, those bases over there keeping keeping stuff together. But you try you're not trying to be president long because you're trying to mess up the money. Mm -hmm. So let's just be real. Pre if the president's job isn't to mess up the money. The president's job is to maintain the status quo. So we no. hear what you're saying, but we know what your job is. You know, the people that would be in the most trouble if he did that in the wars all over the world would be American tourists in all these other countries because it would be open season on them. And when you and when you pull back like that, like some of the things just keep, let's face it, nobody truly uh, outside of the Western world, nobody truly cares for America. You go anywhere in the world. And, and they pretty much they look at you like, man, if I didn't think they would drop bombs on us, man, they would, they would find you cut up in a million pieces. We, we and in terms of like taking politics serious, because all jokes aside, right, we really do need to take politics serious. This is why I say black people don't take politics seriously, because this is like spitting in our face for this man to actually even get the consideration that he's going to run for president using our skin to get in. You know what I'm saying? This is one of the things where we, we just don't really pay attention to the nuances, the, the long-term effects of, of any of the um, political, uh, any of the, the politics that go forward. We, we just don't really pay it any mind. And all we care about is representation. We, we want to, we want to seat at the table. I mean, we don't talk about the, we don't talk about the intricacies of politics. We don't talk about any like like these things here. Did he who did he ask in terms of this platform? Like who did he ask to develop these particular platform points, you know, for uh for his election? Like who did he ask? Who did he interview? Who did he poll in order to figure out what the people want? Because this don't even look like shit black people ask for. Protect the environment. Have you been on the block lately? <laughs> <laughs> All those and, potato chip bags and shit, man. <laughs> and that's why I said this ain't he to me is it's it's a disrespect on a level because it literally is a continuation of Bernie Sanders' platform. And let let us not forget Bernie Sanders lost. Yeah, and Bernie Sanders was a lot more popular than Cornell West is. Yeah, yes. picked up a lot.